Um, oh, back then, like when Joker had just come out, you know, he he was like feeling the character. He was mm -hmm. like just getting into the game, well, with Joker, and his results weren't that hot. But now you see him right here in a uh, loser semis of, no, loser quarters of smashing barrels. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I'm sure these quick, like combo based, fast frame data characters are no. A stranger to to Master Raven here playing Sheik and Smash, Smash 4. Smash definitely. And of course, got to talk about Purple Guy. This man has been the Zelda the purist Zelda. for a very long time. Since Brawl days. Yeah. Brawl, it was Zelda and Sheik. Smash 4 transitioned just to Zelda. <laughs> and right now, he's still <laughs> just rocking the Zelda. And it's not like, like, uh, Zelda's a good character or anything. Purple Guy's just really good. Yeah, absolutely. And right here we see Master Raven. You know, we're only 30 seconds in the match and he already got our send. But he got put in a really awkward position, able to make his way out. Let's see if he can continue this offstage Yeah, definitely. Pressure. He has Master Raven off the stage. And this is basically where you, ha uh, where you want to have Zelda at because sh she doesn't really have any type of, like, way to burst out of the ledge. Just like that, he just tried to dash attack and he's just getting punished and sent off the stage back again. Um, that was a really good recovery, though, and he's going to be able to reset neutral. But Joker right now being um, potentially one of the best characters in the game, probably top three. Yeah, you can definitely uh, make a case for that. Um, definitely a really strong character. Zelda a lot stronger than in previous games, but still you know, distinctly mid-tier. Yeah, definitely. And right but now. Should be interesting to see how she deals with this toolkit. Yeah. It's been 30 seconds, and he just finally was able to get off the ledge. And that downer actually going to kill. Uh, I believe that killed only because he was doing a down smash. So the uh, knockback was much harder than, than the usual. But he's back at the ledge, and now he just, he just has to make it back in. I mean, Master Raven also has been just kind of letting him in for free. You see, like, instead of applying pressure at the ledge, um, like, not taking advantage of, like, Zelda's poor <laughs> hitboxes, uh, he's just been, like, Playing around the ledge and just letting Purple Guy get the uh, get the center stage again. Yeah, absolutely. Purple Guy right here finding himself off stage, stuck at ledge against Arsene Joker. Not a fun place to be for anybody. Definitely not. All those backers. Ethan Aegon. Right now, probably one backer because of all this uh, rage is going to kill at the ledge. Entirely possible. Definitely now. Yeah. Oh, he misses the punish, okay? Yeah, it was a really good drift there from Purple Guy. And that's another issue with this character. He can, he has such a strong punish game, and he has also such a strong, like, zoning tools, mm -hmm. you know? Eha, Aegon, and, like, Gun in general are so good for just keeping your opponent out. Like, right now, he's still, well, not anymore, but he was sitting still at 170%, and Purple Guy is already at 127. And this is something that I was talking to, um, to Purple Guy not too long ago, literally just a couple minutes ago, of how he tends to corner himself. Mm -hmm. Like, if you notice, he'll get the lead and he'll go back to the ledge by himself. So, in my opinion, he's basically doing the opponent's job, like, taking the, con the, the, the stage control. Like, he's just letting himself get pressured, just like that. Yeah, trying to create space for yourself is definitely a double-edged sword. And yeah, it feels like... Uh, Ed, or Purple Guy has been stuck here at the ledge for almost the entire game, but he's living pretty strong here at 163%. Yeah. One thing that I do like from Master Raymond right now is that even though he has Arsene and Purple Guy sitting at 163%, he's not really going, like, desperate for the kill, you know? Like, he's just still waiting for his opening and not really, like, getting antsy or anything like that. Ooh, that up smash almost catching it. Yeah, and that lack of uh, of over aggression is definitely something that is good against someone like Purple Guy's playstyle, who definitely wants to bait and punish you, throw out a down tilt on your shield, or just barely spaced away from you, and expect you to come in and do something and punish that. Definitely. Right there, gonna eat the down air, and even without our sen, that's a stock. Yeah, 160. What what was it? 175 percent? Yeah, the yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> you're not living. Our sen will sneeze on you. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just blow away. But right now, still, back into the corner. Yeah, jumping out of the corner is going to be really strong for Purple Guy right there, able to land the forward smash. Right there, what I mean, like, he did over-aggress because he felt like that was his territory. Master Raven, I mean. Of course. And so he tried to run in, and Purple Guy was ready, throwing out that forward smash. A strong bait and punish game right there for him. Yeah, no, definitely. But right now, finally has the center stage for, like, one of the first times in the entire set, well, the entire game. Yeah, and this is even stocks, you know, so as much as it has looked like Master Raven's game this whole time, um, Purple Guy has some longevity. 
definitely. But now he has Arsene on deck at only 66%. But now he has 84% on himself, and uh, Purple Guy is just doing a really good job of keeping him out. You see, like right there, missing that. Oh, that Aubrey's gonna kill! Oh my goodness, that's super strong! Yeah, yeah, Master Raven not doing the correct DI right there. You definitely, it's really tempting. You know, if, if Zelda grabs you forward, it's really tempting to DI out like the way she's facing. Yeah, Because that's definitely. how you usually want to do on down throws. But no, her down throw DI pops in. you up behind you. So you want to DI up behind her. So you want to DI in, you'll go too far behind her for her to follow up. Exactly. But if you DI, if you want to DI out yeah. so she can't follow up. But if you DI out, that's the other way around. You DI, DI in. Out. You he can't follow up. If you DI out, you pop straight up and you eat an up air. Exactly. So. Although at lower percents, she can follow up with a back air. If she mm -hmm. reads a DI, if you DI back, she can still react and get you with that back air. That back air is super strong, too. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting to see. I think um, it's really tough uh, to uh, to combo Master Raven right now for Purple Guy just because he does have that Rebels Guard coming out. And Zelda's combo game is not airtight by any stretch of the imagination. Exactly. It's it's also not great. And Joker being such a slim buddy, it's also harder to punish. Oh, That's okay, the barrier never mind. you were talking about out of down throw. Uh -huh. uh, already 68%, 74%. He already has Arsen. And this is like this is when people start complaining about mm -hmm. uh, Joker, you know? Because they're like, oh, yeah, Joker has like Arsen 50% of the game. But yeah, you don't notice that you're beating him up. Like, mm -hmm. when he has Arsene, you're doing a good job, essentially, unless he, like, did something with Rebel's Guard. Yeah, it but is a comeback mechanic, for sure. Definitely. But right now, still keeping himself at the ledge. Oh. I was expecting a falling downer into an <laughs> up smash or a backer or something <laughs> cheeky like that. We're seeing that really long-lasting up smash there. That last hit of up air isn't going to kill him. No, Joker definitely struggles killing without Arsene. Mm -hmm. He needs a... Uh, to get his opponent to either a really high percent or, um, you know, like, first hit of fair into drag down up air, down smash or up smash, uh, a good read with an up smash, mm -hmm. a good straight backer at really high percents at the ledge or gimping itself. And but right there, a lightning kick, trading with the first hit of dash attack there. Very good move there from Purple Guy. Definitely. Strong accuracy. This man's been playing this character for so long, <laughs> you know. He knows his character. Oh, but that was a great feedback back air and catching him doing that down air, and it's gonna kill him off the side. Only, we, we still have five and a half minutes to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this has been a high octane game. Yeah. This said. That was a really good, almost like a triangle jump coming out from Master Raven, just to make sure he avoided Purple Guy's button, because he may have even been expecting a neutral B, which is what a lot of Zelda's like to throw out at a disadvantage. But right here, you know. Purple guy once again finding himself cornered, just yeah. eating a whole lot of buttons. Master Raven right now, too, moving really nicely around uh, around Purple guy, just keeping himself at advantage. He literally hasn't touched the floor in 30 seconds. Right finally there, gets finally some damage. damage yeah. Really good grab, getting into that flash kick. Already has Arsene, and this is really scary for Purple guy because one good hit will. More than likely be the kill. One first hit of forward air into a back air into an up air or into oh okay never mind. Yeah, that down air is like melee falcon down air. Like you can follow up so much off of it right there. Master Raven calling out the double jump out of the corner with the forward air. Arsene Fair definitely gonna take that stock. Honestly, I didn't know how to feel about this stage pick at the beginning, uh, especially. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I didn't know how to feel about this stage in particular because, uh, <laughs> because, you know, Joker likes to get a lot of like drag down up airs. He wants to like follow you up, um, basically not letting you land, doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But with these platforms, it takes away, uh, it takes a lot away from those combos. I also feel like he can do like up air into up air thanks to the platform, right. but I I don't see Master Raven. Uh, Recognizing the ability to do that out of the platforms, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Right here, Purple Guy corners himself again, kind of throwing out some of his zoning options. Runs up and uses invincibility. Oh, he almost got that back air off of the setup, but the tech option was there. Still Slightly. seeing Master Raven DI that down throw uh, to a point where there's a really easy follow-up for Zelda. Yeah, he was kind of looking for that uh, in, like, DI in, mm -hmm. but he just DI'd away again, I guess. Good mix up. Now he's off the stage. Okay, never mind. He has Harson, and now Purple Guy has to find a way to get back into the stage. But now he F tilts 99% outside of the stage. He grabs the ledge, and now is Master even going to do something about this? He's applying a lot of pressure with those backers. Actually, going to get him off the stage, and that's going to kill. That was that was 90 before hit. Mm -hmm. That was either really bad DI, or back is just that strong. It may have been a little bit of both, man. Like. It, 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 it was interesting to see Purple Guy trying to get out of the corner a lot in that game. 
And it came to a point, especially when he was against Arsene, where he had to jump out of the corner. Yeah. Something funny about when you're jumping is you can't block. So <laughs> Jumping's a commitment. Exactly. So especially burning his double jump, he got caught in the same way he got caught with the forward air uh, a couple stocks earlier. But yet, really good awareness there from Master Raven, knowing that that back air is super strong and covers a good amount of distance. And even if you miss it, you can throw out another one before you land and still you can be safe. Full hub, do two of them. When you land, you can throw out another one and then just fade back. That back air is so good and so safe. But we've got a tie game here now at one to one. And this is a best of three in losers quarters. I think until the, the three finals, we have best of five. I think it is a best of three, yes. Yeah. I think it's a best of five until finals, either winner, losers, and mm -hmm. friends. But yeah, this stage, I actually agree with this stage. Um, from both parties, actually. I can see the stage being beneficial for both Joker and Zelda. Both of them have really like big space to run around, mm -hmm. just bait each other out. Uh, purple guy is going to have a little bit more space to be throwing those phantoms. Yeah, it's kind of this really interesting push and pull in this matchup where you have a character like Joker who wants to enter the fray with momentum. He wants to create space and then come in with something. And Zelda oftentimes wants to open up the space, and then if you don't close the space, then he'll start approaching you. Yeah, that was a really good narrow. Unfortunately, not going to get any follow-up uh, after that. Oh, going to get the up smash? No. That was a really good look, looking for the back air. Triangle jump was just a little bit off. Right there, I, I respect that counter a lot. Because if you notice, uh, throughout the whole turn, oh, goodness, that back air out of shield. But um, I don't know if you've noticed, but most of the matches throughout the whole tournament, Purple Guy likes to hold down on his recovery to be able to hit his opponent when they're trying to ledge trap him. Mm -hmm. Right? So that counter, I respect it a lot. Because if Purple Guy had done that, he was definitely going to die to that counter. Right there, that was super smart from Purple Guy, knowing that his combo Ooh. game isn't airtight. So he goes for the down throw, and he sees the Rebels guard, or I think it's Tetracarn with a... Tetracarn, yeah. Yeah, with a Arsene. But so he sees the Tetracarn comes out and gets the reset on the combo here. So you know, Purple Guy's still holding it down. He still has all three of his stocks. He could have gone for the straight-up up B there. Yeah, he, he could have. Back then, he got, uh, he got one of those up Bs, but he got him with the weak hitbox mm -hmm. of the first up B, and unfortunately, it didn't, co uh, it didn't combo. But that backer going to kill off the side. At 140-something percent, Jesus Christ. Yeah, still a nice little lead here for Purple Guy. And he's got some options out of disadvantage in this matchup, which is good. Mm -hmm. Especially because of this platforms, he can he can do a little bit more, you know? He does have a special with invincibility on it, which is strong for anybody to have some disadvantage. Oh, he actually, and if you overextend yeah. <laughs> there, you might eat a lightning kick he to the face. He actually just fell down with it. <laughs> I was expecting him to do it again. I'm sorry, I'm screwing too much. <laughs> it's that hype, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. Dude, whenever I see Smash, I get, I, I get hyped up. I have to scream. I mean, I have to scream. But right there. Oh, really good drag down. Fantastic reset. Still going to continue this ledge trap. And this game, extremely even, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Master Raven able to close the gap pretty nicely. And now there's only about a 20% difference, 30% difference between the two of them. Yeah, and one one thing that I'm liking a lot about Master Raven is the way he's closing up the gaps. Oh my goodness, that all be was really <laughs> <laughs> it was really bold. It was, it was. I I understand where he's coming from because it's uh, it again comes down to Purple Guy's game plan when he creates the space and seeing what his opponent does with the space that he gives them. And right there, Master Raven was kind of just chilling out, dash dancing, spacing bears in the middle of the stage, kind of daring Purple Guy to come in, and Purple Guy was like. I'm no punk. I'm going to come in. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right there, uh, Master Raven actually got one forward throw, and uh, Purple Guy was DI'ing away, uh, trying to trying to look for the DI mix-up when uh, when Jokers throw you down. If you DI away, I mean, if you DI in, you die off the top. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, fortunately, you know, he wasn't at kill percent for that throw. Ooh, that was a little bit sneaky, and he gets it with that forward smash. Max spaced, and just when he got Arson too, that was huge. Now, like getting the kill right there is huge because it resets the uh, the um, the the meter. Help me out, meter. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, you. thank you very much. It re uh, restarts the meter, and he was just getting arson too. Mm -hmm. So now he has a lot of time for him to be able to get that percent that he needs before he gets arson back. 
Yeah, and the dash dancing before he threw out that forward smash was exactly. really nice. He was both baiting an option to out of his opponent, while at the same time spacing correctly for that forward smash. But now, uh, Purple Guy just lost a stock of his own, so it's 1-1 one, one last stock here, and not that big of a margin here. No, uh, it, really it just got extended to a, a solid margin. So. Yeah, uh, if he had a little bit more meter, I'd say it, it'd be even, actually. Yeah. But right now, with this percent and that meter, it's definitely... I mean, not anymore. Uh, yeah, egg. he hit the egg on, <laughs> and that's going to keep on tacking on some nice damage. 20%. 10 on hit and, and 10 on the... Uh, Jeez. Yeah, yeah they're pretty much even now. It'll it'll be down to see if uh, oh. Purple God can get a nice oh. read, like right there. Both of them are basically the same percent, just 2% of difference right now. Master Raven playing around oh, Purple so Guy, tight. just really nice. And now he's at the ledge. He has to choose an option. And that fast full... Forwarder actually gonna take the stock and gonna take out Master Raven from the tournament. Actually, 